Today, we're diving into the thrilling history of one of the world's most popular sports, volleyball. From its birth in the late 19th century to its Olympic status, we'll explore all the key moments that have shaped volleyball into what we know and love today. Join us on this time travel adventure. It all started back in 1895 in Massachusetts when William George Morgan, a physical education instructor, came up with a new game. He aimed to combine physical activity and accessibility for folks of all ages. The story goes that Morgan invented this game for those who found basketball too dull and exhausting, offering an alternative physical activity. Keep in mind, basketball was only four years old at that time and had already bored its new contender. William looked at existing sports and picked out aspects that he believed best suited his purpose. He borrowed the ball from basketball, the net from tennis, and the use of hands from handball. This concoction became volleyball, but it got even more interesting with the introduction of innings borrowed from baseball and later called sets. Morgan was quite fond of tennis, but it required too much equipment. However, he did like the net idea. They raised the net a bit higher than the average man's head, around 2 meters, planning to lob the ball over it. Since there wasn't a specialized ball at that time, Morgan experimented with the basketball's bladder, which was too light, and the basketball itself, which was too heavy. It wasn't until five years after the game's invention that the first volleyball was created. And just for laughs, Morgan and Naismith were buddies. William even took advice from the other ball game's creator. Originally, the game was called Mintonette. But a year later, William decided to showcase his game to the public. They used two teams of five men each. The commission, which included Professor Alfred Halsted, was impressed by the game, but not the name. Halsted suggested it looked like the men were volleying the ball back and forth, and thus volleyball was born. The name was two words back then, only becoming one, volleyball, in 1952. And now over a billion people play volleyball. I've just shared the official version of how this sport came about, but of course there are alternative volleyball origin stories. Some believe American firefighters, bored and looking for entertainment, created the game by batting a ball over a rope between two poles. Japanese historians claim this game was known in their land over 3000 years ago. And three centuries BCE, Romans were supposedly playing fistball, a variant of modern volleyball, now popular in Germany. What's truly important isn't so much how volleyball originated, but that it's here now, and we get to enjoy it. Not every volleyball enthusiast knows all the rules and their practical application, let alone those unfamiliar with the sport. Volleyball is one of the most complex sports when it comes to the barrier to entry. Volleyball rules have evolved significantly, and now I'd like to talk about the main changes. Here's a quick rundown of the rules William Morgan used when he first devised the game. A match lasted 9 innings, not sets, each corresponding to the number of players on each side. In one-on-one -on -one play, there was one series of serves per side. Losing the serve counted as half an inning. Back then, there was no fixed number of players on the court. The original court was about 15 meters by 8, small enough to fit in any school gym. Just a reminder, modern courts are 9 by 18 meters. You could only score points on your serve, similar to today's side-out scoring system. To serve, you had to toss the ball over the net, nothing new there. But you had two attempts, like in tennis. There was also a nuance. If you didn't make the net, but your teammate held the ball over, it counted as a successful serve. Any touch of the net by the ball was a fault. And if the ball touched the boundary line, it was out. You had to land the ball within the court to score. However, if the ball hit the ceiling or a wall and then came back into play, the rally continued. Significantly, there were no limits on the number of touches to send the ball over the net. Even one player could touch it multiple times before parting with it. The first official rules emerged in 1897, specifying the ball's size and weight, although the ball itself wasn't invented until three years later. By the early 20th century, volleyball started acquiring more understandable rules, resembling modern ones. For instance, in 1917, a set went to 15 points instead of the previous 25. The next year, the rule about six players per team and rotating before serving was established. 
Due to the Filipinos who introduced bombs or powerful spikes, rules had to be adapted. Essentially, the Philippines can be considered the forefathers of the strong and aggressive attacks and serves that are now integral to modern volleyball. The net height was promptly adjusted to 2 meters and 43 centimeters. This might seem odd in the metric system, but it's straightforward when you think in feet. It's 8 feet high. The rules were also amended to allow only 3 touches per team and to prevent a single player from touching the ball twice in succession. Now, let's briefly walk through the main rule changes over the past century or so. In 1922, the rule that a player must not step on or over the line when serving was introduced. Plus, a mandatory 2-point lead to win the set was added. By 1925, substitutions and limits on them were introduced. In 1937, it became legal to touch the ball several times during powerful attacks. By 1938, the double block was regulated, specifying that only adjacent players in the lineup could perform it. In 1940, the ball had to be made from 12 leather panels. For the next 10 years, there were no significant changes, but then came several key reforms. First, the triple block was legalized, as were attacks from behind the back line. Serving from any point behind the end line was allowed, paving the way for jump serves. Soon after, positioning rules were introduced, and in 1960, the net height for women's games was lowered to a more suitable 2 meters and 24 centimeters. Then they introduced the 3 meter line, which was previously closer to the net. Antennas were added to the net by then. In 1976, a block no longer counted as the first team touch and the rule against consecutive touches after a strong attack was abolished. In 1984, it became permissible to have a double contact on service reception, and blocking the serve became illegal. By 1999, the match structure we know today was established. Sets go to 25 points, with a tiebreak set to 15 points if necessary. Finally, in 2001, it was ruled that interactions with the ball after it touches the net on your side weren't a fault. And a year later, coaches were allowed to communicate with players during the game, not just during timeouts. With modern rules, you can familiarize yourself in detail. I've already covered the most interesting ones in a separate video series. Now, volleyball is one of the most demanded sports globally. The International Volleyball Federation, FIVB, oversees more than 200 national federations. However, volleyball was once merely a local pastime or a school game. Just a decade after its invention, volleyball began rapidly conquering continents, largely thanks to American military expeditions. First, it spread throughout Asia, then the Caribbean nations, and eventually it saturated South America and Europe. Despite the first official international competitions taking place at the Far Eastern Games in 1913 and the first US national championship occurring in 1922, the first international volleyball organization was established in Europe. In 1924, Czechoslovakia founded the Basketball and Volleyball Union. In the latter half of the 1920s, national federations began appearing, for instance, in Russia, Bulgaria, the USA and Japan. In 1934, a global sports federation meeting in Stockholm decided to create a technical volleyball commission, which included 13 European countries, 4 Asian and 5 each from South and North America. And only in April 1947 in Paris, the International Volleyball Federation FIVB, was officially established with the Frenchman Paul Libot as its president, a position he held for 37 years. From that point on, modern volleyball history was written. The first European Championship took place in Italy in 1948, and the first men's world championship was hosted by Czechoslovakia a year later. Women's teams had their chance to compete internationally in 1952 in the USSR. In 1957, volleyball was recognized as an Olympic sport, making its debut in the 1964 Tokyo Olympics. The first Olympic champions were the men's team from the Soviet Union and the women's team from Japan. If you're interested in more detailed histories of major tournaments, just let me know in the comments. Today, volleyball isn't just a sport, it's a spectacle. It has profoundly influenced sports culture worldwide, providing a unique platform for physical strength, strategic thinking and team collaboration. From modest beginnings in gymnasiums to Olympic arenas, volleyball has become one of the planet's most popular and exciting spectacles.
Thanks to everyone who joined me today to celebrate this amazing journey. I hope this video inspires you not just to watch volleyball matches, but perhaps to start playing if you haven't already. And if you are already on this path, don't ever think of quitting. Also, feel free to share your most interesting volleyball related story in the comments below. I'm sure you have something to share with everyone. And if you're just getting to know this game, check out the video on my channel where I briefly explain how to play volleyball. It's a must watch. Plus, I strongly urge you to subscribe to my channel because you won't find such a diverse range of volleyball content anywhere else. So hit that red button to stay updated with the new videos. And as always, it was Nick here with you. Love what you do and you'll definitely succeed. See you soon. Bye.